I'm going to go over the 2018 AP Chemistry FRQ question number five. This is a four-point question. So we have HF plus water turns into F minus and H3O plus. So we can see that this is the dissociation of a weak acid. And we know it's a weak acid because we have a double arrow right there. And we're going to be talking about the Ka of this. So the ionization of HF and water is represented by the equation above. And in a 0 0.0350 molar HF solution, the percent ionization of HF is 13%. So if it was a strong acid, it would be 100%, but it's only 13%. So two particulate representations of the ionization of HF molecules in this 0 0.035 molar HF solution are shown below, figure 1 and figure 2. Water molecules are not shown. Explain why the representation of HF molecules in figure 1 is more accurate than the representation in figure 2. So the idea here, if we look at number 1, we can see here we have all these little HF, 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 and one of those has broken up into uh, H3O plus and F minus. So out of all these molecules, there's only one out of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 molecules that are not broken up. So that's about 13%. Where over here, we can see what we have is we don't have any HF molecules. Okay, they've all broken up into F minuses. Okay, so this guy would be a strong, good representation of a strong acid like HCl or HBr, HI, but this one over here is HF. So we have to say something about the fact that this guy is only a tiny bit broken up. Or we can also do the other side and say, well, this one, you know, can't be HF because it's completely broken up, completely dissociated, and that would be a strong acid. And this is the better representation. Now, the next portion of this question says to use the uh, fact that this is 13%. Okay, figure, you figure out the Ka for this uh, reaction. So, first off, we say, well, okay, I have an equation here, and we're saying that the HF is breaking up into H plus and F minus, and I'm, instead of saying plus water and H3O plus, I'm just going to say H plus, same thing. And what happens with this is if it's only 13% dissociated, we can figure out what's 13% of the 0 0.0350 molar. So 0.13 times 0 0.035, uh, we're going to get 0 0.00455 molar. So back to our icebox, that we start off with 0 0.0350 molar, and it doesn't say we have any of the H plus or OH minus, so that's implied at zero. And 13% of it dissociates, 13% dissociates, so we're going to put 0 0.00455 molar here. And if that breaks up, we also get 0 0.00455 molar here. And we're going to use up 0 0.00455 molar here. And then that means that our change, because this is a the initial values, the equilibrium values, and the change we go through. So we must have made 0 0.00455 molar and made 0 0.00455 molar. Now we have one calculation here to do, and that is how much are we going to have here? How much of our HF are we going to have left? And if we subtract 0 0.00455 from 0 0.0350, uh, we get a value of 0. 0 0.0304 molar. Now to get a Ka expression, okay, all we do is take the concentration of our products, so H plus or H3O plus times F minus all over the HF concentration. And we're just going to substitute in our equilibrium values right here. And so that is going to be 0 0.00455 molar times 0 0.00455 molar all divided by 0 0.0304 molar and the final answer 6.81 times 10 to the negative 4 so that's the Ka for HF based on the fact that it only breaks up 13%. And that is worth two points.
okay one point back here for figuring out this number so you know what's the 13% uh, of the initial concentration and then the other point for getting to the final answer here so that's three of our four points part C of this says if 50 milliliters of distilled water is added to 50 milliliters of our 0 0.035 molar HF uh, solution will the percent ionization of HF in the solution increase decrease or remain the same justify your answer with an explanation or a calculation so we have our equilibrium we're going to go back and dilute this down you know double the volume so it would be diluted down to half and then so is that going to make this shift to the right is it going to make a shift to the left okay because we're asking for will the percent ionization increase so if we can kind of figure out which way it's going to shift so here's what we want to do is here we had our ka expression we just figured out but what we're going to do is actually go back and figure out q now q is a really useful tool and what this does is tell us where we are with respect to equilibrium and we're going to say well this h3o plus used to be 0 0.035 but we just divided it in half so on the top here, the H3O plus would be 0 0.035 molar divided by 2. And the F minus just went down, so that's 0 0.035 molar divided by 2. And the HF solution that we had, okay, I just did that a little bit wrong. Let's go back. I still like Q. But the idea here is, if I take whatever my H3O plus concentration is at equilibrium and take that concentration and divide by 2 and multiply by my F minus concentration, whatever that came out to be, divided by 2, and divide that by my HF minus, HF, this is not minus, HF concentration, okay, divided by 2, then I can see what's going to happen is that this 2 and this 2, those are going to cancel out, but I'm going to end up with a Q that is half of whatever my K was. Now, I don't really care what the value is. I just want to know that that Q is smaller than K. And if my Q is smaller than K, that means my reaction is going to shift toward the products because I want to make more products to get a larger K till, so my Q reaches equilibrium. So I can see what's going to happen is I'm going to shift to the right, which means that more of my uh, substance here is going to dissociate. So I'm going to have an increase in my dissociation. And that's the answer to part C. That is just for one point to get that answer plus a nice uh, um, explanation. Now you could go back and kind of make up numbers, put them in and find out that it does, uh, you get about a 20% you know, percent increase. Not exactly correct, but it will give you the right answer and that gets credit as well. But Q versus K is a nice situation. This divided by two, this divided by two, and this divided by two. So the idea here, since we have two products that are getting divided by two, or only one reacting getting divided by two, our Q ends up being smaller than K. Now, one little thing that does not get credit is if you said, okay, this is Le Chatelier's and we just added some water, so it's gonna to shift to the right. That gives the correct answer, but adding water to a solution, you know, does not change the concentration of the water. The water, you know, you cannot change the concentration of the water. It does change the concentration of all the other chemicals, and that's where the Q comes in. But adding water does not necessarily by itself shift the equilibrium. That is question five.